please pray with me. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from Acts chapter 3. And for those of you who have been here the last few weeks, we're still working our way through um, through Acts. Um, there is a little bit of a typo in the bulletin. It says verses 11 through 20, and it's actually 11 through 21, and then also verses tw verse 26, if you're following along. Hear the word of the Lord. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant. Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you, to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm sure you've run into this problem where what you think you know actually gets in the way of knowing what you actually need to know. Um, I have bruised shins and stubbed toes believe and I knew where the furniture was in a dark room. Like most of you, I've got uh, some bruises on my heart and have inflicted a two, some on others by failing to truly know other people like I should. Business thinkers in a rapidly changing 21st century have come to the conclusion that in times of rapid change, what you think you know will deceive you. Now, other times we just flat out have bad information. And you know, the old garbage in, garbage out. There's a clock in the conference room that I frequently catch myself glancing at. It's a beautiful wood burl clock that uh, Pete Eldon made. It's up there on the wall. But it, as they say, is only right twice a day. And it's been right on that same time for a long time. But if I were to count on it, I'd be getting bad information. Now, on the other hand, sometimes it's how we perceive and interpret something that messes us up. Um, can you go back to, or back one, I guess. Oh, well. We're, a couple of years ago, you had that dress you see up in the upper left corner. Now, on that dress, um, how, I see it as a white and gold dress. How, how many of you see it as a white and gold dress? 
All right, well, I think there's 50%, 7% of the human race sees it as a white and gold dress. How many of you see it as a blue and black dress? How many don't see the dress? <laughs> yeah, you're real participative today, aren't you? But the truth is, it's actually blue and black in our eyes, or the way our mind is interpreting it, is, it, is wrong if you're like me and you see it as white and gold. Now, on that cube, you know, it's kind of hard to see, and I'm standing in front of it. You see the arrow points to two little squares. The one on the top is brown. What color is the one on the bottom? Yeah, it's kind of gold or yellow looking, isn't it? What if I told you both those squares are exactly the same color? And that even though it's in the shadow and it looks brighter than the one on top, they're both exactly brown. Now, being a geek, I took that a little further. Go on to the next slide, Mel. And there's an eyedropper thing in Photoshop and in a lot of graphics programs. I go and I click on that yellow square. Yeah, you can see the yellow there a little bit. And it comes up with that brown. Now, I kind of went, uh, how are people going to believe you? So being a bigger geek, I recorded myself doing that. <laughs> so here I am in Photoshop, and I recorded myself doing it. You see in the arrow where that looks brown? OK, Mel. I think you'll have to either space bar or click on it to start it playing. I'm going to go through with that eyedropper. You see I clicked on a white square, a yellow square, a red square, a white square. Oh, I just clicked on that yellow square we're talking about, and it comes up brown. The point being that we can see something, but our minds might misinterpret it and tell us something is there that isn't. You know, we can see, we can believe, but not only do we have to have good information, but we have to understand what it means. In today's passage, Peter is once again revealing Jesus as the Messiah, as God's righteous one, to a group of people who saw Jesus, who knew about Jesus, but they even called for Barabbas, a murderer, to be freed rather than Jesus. Now, this passage that we've looked at today immediately follows what we looked at last week, uh, where Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray. They run into a man that's been lame since birth, whose friends bring him there and put him by the temple so he can beg alms from people. And Peter says, you know, silver and gold, we don't have any of that. But what we have I give you in the name of Jesus. He reaches out, takes the man's hand, raises him up, and he begins to leap, and he begins to dance. And there's a lot of people who recognize this guy as the man who had been lame by there. And they're amazed, and they crowd around Peter and John, go, wow, look at it. And they say, don't look at us. We didn't do this. We can't do this. The people saw the data, but they were misinterpreting it already. Because in their mind, in their understanding of God, of Christ the Messiah was flawed. And because of that, the healing of this man, they didn't have a place to put that in their brain. It didn't compute. There was cognitive dissonance going on. They had no way to grasp it. And because of that, not only did they misunderstand it, but they misunderstood something far larger, God's revelation of power and of compassion in Jesus' name. So they faced a tough task. They had a group there, and they had to say, you know what, you're wrong about what you think is happening here. And that's pretty hard, but it's not nearly as hard as, except in the fact that sometimes we're the one that has it wrong. <laughs> so
So he's, Peter's going to explain to this crowd what has actually taken place. And this is even more difficult than convincing someone like myself who sees that dress as white and gold or sees those squares as brown and yellow. He had to reveal to them how Jesus was God's chosen one. He was the Messiah. He is the Lord of life. But they had called for him to be executed. So Peter begins to under, um, uncover the crowd's need to see their faith and see Jesus in a whole different perspective. Now, Shannon read these verses, but I want to step through verses 13 and 16 and look at these contrasts. Verse 13, it says, This Jesus that they turned over to the Romans for punishment, even the unbelieving Roman governor thought he was innocent. Verse 14, they chose a murderer rather than the innocent, holy, and righteous one. Verse 15, they chose the one who took the lives of other people rather than Jesus who gives life. The one who deserved to die lived. The one who deserved to live was the one who died. And yet, the one they killed is the very one that God raised from the dead. A lot of contrasts. They're opposites, aren't they? Verse 16. This Jesus, whom they crucified and killed, is the one in whose name the man was healed. They got it backwards, didn't they? Because they were looking at Jesus from a faulty perspective, they missed God's greatest gift. This Jesus who they killed turns out to be the one that they need to seek if they want to live themselves. And because they continue to have this inadequate view of who Jesus was, they assumed that the healing was done by Peter and by John rather than Jesus. But Peter sees this as the great opportunity that it is because he had been there himself. It wasn't that much earlier, seven weeks earlier, that Peter denied knowing Jesus three times. And yet he knew Jesus as Lord and Messiah now. The first thing that Peter made clear was, hey, it's not John and I that you need to seek. You need to seek Jesus. This man wasn't healed because Peter and John were so pious or they possessed that power. The man wasn't healed because of anything he deserved or that he earned. The man was healed through a power beyond their own. And it takes place right at the temple where they're worshiping the Almighty God who in the first beginning of the Ten Commandments says, I am the Lord your God who delivered you from slavery in Egypt. Thou shalt have no other gods beside me. They worship the God who provided manna, the God who defeated their enemies. And yet right at the temple, they're not seeing that that God can heal a man that was lame from birth. Why is it that we're sometimes surprised or our eyes glaze over and we miss seeing when God does something miraculous because we want to understand and know how everything works when things done in God's power don't fit within the laws of physics or the economics of the world or your ability or my ability. But God does his work through us, not because of us, not because of what we can do, but because of what God can do. How often do we miss the miracles that happen in our lives and that are around us 
because we don't expect God to use that power in Jesus' name. How often do we fail to reach out to someone, to ask someone whose car's broken down if they know their eternal future? Because we're scared. Because I can't do it. I can't talk. Moses tried that. He, Moses told God, choose someone else. I can't talk before Pharaoh. I have a speech impediment. <laughs> and yet God chooses who he chooses. Not because of what they can do, but because of what God can do through them. And God chooses you. Because God can do amazing things in you and from that through you. For the people in the crowd, the people going to worship God at the temple, they expect that God of miracles to be ordinary, to do things the same way he always had, to not surprise them to meet their expectations. And, and you know what? If you have low expectations of God, there's going to be a lot of things that are confusing. <laughs> but Peter, being the blunt guy that he is, tells the crowd, you acted out of ignorance. Get smart, he's implying. Get a better perspective. Understand the God who would do such a thing for this person. He says, Get rid of the attitude that leads to death and seek the one that leads to life. That's what he says. He just uses different words for that. He says repent. <laughs> because repentance isn't so much doing the right thing. It's understanding yourself and the world from God's perspective rather than our own. And when we do that, we act rightly, rather than out of ignorance like these people did, because we see things in the light of how God created them, in the light of what God is doing, can do, and is yet to do. Repentance, repentance isn't remorse for this thing and that thing in our lives. Instead, it's seeing what we've never seen before, even in the midst of things we thought we always knew. The Greek word is metanoia, kind of a change of knowledge, of understanding. Repentance isn't just an act. It's, that's only the beginning because it's living in that new attitude in life. So Peter offers the crowd some good news, that Jesus is great news because not only is Jesus in the business of letting us off the hook for our sin. But it's also that we might experience what's described in this passage as times of refreshment. That as we repent, not only are our sins forgiven, but we're led into these times of repentance. Have you ever worked at a task that's so hard, so hard, so hard, and then you realize you were doing it wrong. <laughs> you go, oh, it works better that way. And once you discover the right way, it becomes easy and perhaps even a joy. And so that is what repentance is. To have our sins wiped out and to receive a blessing from God. Now, if you're overwhelmed with a mountain of credit card debt and someone pays your bill for you every last penny what's the first thing you do do you run out and start charging again because you've got a lot more credit balance <laughs> no you've been freed from that you had been there but it's in the past and you know what your life will be different your life in Christ will be different as different as the lame man that was healed can now walk and leap and praise God. Do you think that man 
ever look back, you know, those were pretty good days when I got a ride to work <laughs> on that stretcher and laid by the gate and I begged for some alms. Yeah, it's good now, but I miss those days too. <laughs> no, of course not. God's desire to do in our lives and in our hearts what he did for this man, that we would repent. That would be our standing up and being raised in Christ's power. That we would leap and dance, praising God in a time of refreshment and of life and of healing. I believe that rather than reminiscing about those day, days when he was lame, this man lived his life in gratitude and of generosity and of love because he was grateful for what God had done. May that be true for you and, and for me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you, as the song says, just as